Welcome to a special episode of NeverEndingPanel.com, shot live from the Pasadena Hilton and Westercom 63. Tonight we have a special slew of guests and we're going to be talking about the idea of bidding for cons. Eitan and I have been to a number of cons and there's always these tables lined up, people asking you to bid and we don't know what's going on. And parties. And what? And parties. And parties. So we figured we would just get the guys in and gal and figure out what, what is this bidding thing. So let me introduce the guests. To, to my right is Alex Van Thorne, the Seattle uh, webmaster of Westercon. Kevin Stanley to his right is the treasurer of the Tonopah, Nevada? Tonopah. Tonopah, Nevada, uh, bid for Westercon. And to uh, Kevin's right is uh, Laura Domitz, who is the uh, membership bid committee. You are on the membership bid committee for member Westercon? Member of the bid committee. Just a member of the bid committee. Member, member of the bid committee for uh, Westercon for Texas. And San Antonio. No. World San Antonio. Con for San Antonio. World, World Con, Con. See, I'm completely off on that one. And to your right is, of course, my brother, who I am well familiar with. And to Aton's right is Tim Trevich, sound man Tim, expert extraordinaire, uh, founder of Soft Egg, and uh, creator of inc incredible software for DSI games, should you be interested. Um, I I'd give the website, but we've done the interview. Anyways, let's dive right into it, and I'm going to open it up to the panel. What is this bidding thing that we see? You're giving away candy, food, drinks, stickers, and asking us to pay money to do what? Well. Most science fiction conventions are held in the same place by the same group of people every year. You go to LostCon every year, it's the same, it's a LostCon this year, it's a LostCon next year, it's put on by LostFest, it's in the LA area. Not all conventions are like that. There are several conventions that are held in different cities every year, and a different group of fans put that convention on every single year, and they're independent of each other, but they all share the same name. The most well-known of this, these would be the World Science Fiction Convention, or Worldcon, which was first held in 1939. Every year, uh, there's a separate Worldcon. This year, it's in Melbourne, Australia. Next year, it's in Reno. And the way we choose where this convention is held is not by bribing a board of directors, but by having the members vote. So everybody who's a member of this year's Worldcon in Australia will vote on where to hold the Worldcon two years from now. Groups who want to hold a Worldcon say, we're bidding for a Worldcon. We're bidding for San Antonio in uh, 2013 or Chicago in 2012 or what have you. And you try to get the members of the Worldcon that's doing the voting to vote for you. Now, what? Westercon is a much smaller convention and is elected the same way. This year's Westercon was choosing where to hold the Westercon two years from now. How, so how what, what, do you group, what do you offer them that... Wait, 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 wait. How does a group get to get... Can any couple of guys knock back a few in a barn and say, oh, we're going to go for our city. Yes. Westercon yes. Fresno. Yes. Is it yes, the really requir that simple? Yes, the requirements are fairly simple. Uh, you have, in order to be shown on the ballot, because there's a ballot, the requirements are, for a Westercon, you have to have two people, a treasurer and a chairman. Uh, uh, you need some sort of agreement with a facility and a document saying how your group is organized. So you have to have this all lined up before you dare step foot in the door of, say, Las Vegas, who, who runs Westercon. Well, say, Las Vegas does, not, does run not run Westercon. No, See, now that's, that's the base. Okay, you, so you're you making the assumption that the same group runs the convention. Donnie got year, it wrong. And it doesn't. Donnie got it okay. wrong. No, no. It's, well, uh, we're here to learn. That you're here to learn. Uh, it's not Las Vegas running uh, Westercon. It's whoever's running that year's Westercon. Got it. For example, so, next year's Westercon is in San Jose and is being run by a group I'm with called San Francisco Science Fiction Conventions Incorporated. Got it. So next year, if you want to bid for the Westercon two years after that, before a set deadline, which is published in, the doc, in our doc publications and on our website, you file papers that say, we're this people and we're organized this way and yeah. we want to bid yeah. this site. We had a couple drinks in the bar and then this yeah. is what we And if you, if you meet the requirements, then you're saying, I want to hold a Westercon. And you're, if you meet the technical requirements, you're on the ballot. And the members of next year's Westercon would then vote on that election. Is this like a candidate situation where at the end of it, if you've won, you sit there in the room going, now what do I do? Sometimes. To, a, to a some extent. Sometimes. I, I've been on bids that won. I've been on bids that lost. I chaired the, I was the chairman of the bid to bring the Worldcon to San Jose, California in 2002. I went to Australia in 1999, which is where the election was, and I was there when we counted the ballots and said, okay, we got the votes we needed to win, and now we have to hold the 2002 Worldcon. Now what? But that's another story. But that's how the bidding process works. And both Westercon and Worldcon are bidded conventions. There are other conventions that are bidded. We won't go into them here. And so what, it, it, 
you know, I had mentioned Las Vegas as being associated with Westercon. What is their association? They are one of the groups that have held Westercons. Now, okay, gotcha. there is a technical involvement in that. Should the process ever break down, as like nobody files a bid or they're, they're unable to decide, Losfus owns the trademark or service mark actually on the name Westercon. However, they've never had to exercise that uh, 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 power in any in any given time. So. Losfus founded it some many many years ago, so they have this you know emergency procedure if they ever need to. So this is unique to uh, Losfus. Westercon doesn't have a, a group that sort of. Uh, is the owner of it, so to speak? Well, Losfus owns the name Westercon. And, gotcha. and if, as if, and, and as the a, default. They are the default, the if all else fails, but we go to them. But there's most no similar kind of situation no. for any of the other roving companies. No, the World Science Fiction Convention is the annual meeting of the World Science Fiction Society, yeah, okay. which doesn't even have a board of directors, isn't yeah. incorporated, and has as little government as possible. To become a member of the World Science Fiction Society, you join the current Worldcon, and that's it. Wow. So it was formed by Robert Heinlein. <laughs> you know, actually, actually, very seriously, when I first read The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, and I saw the Congress of Free Luna in the book, I read that, I said, I didn't know Robert Heinlein ever attended a Worldcon business meeting, <laughs> because that's how the Worldcons are, are run at their, their, in their rules. Every one of the thousands of members of the Worldcon can come to the business meeting and propose business and vote. So how do you get votes? Well, you go out... You, you, you sit at these tables you were talking about. Right. Maybe the other two people who are more actively bidding than I am. <laughs> I, I am I'm actually, as you may, you may have one noticed, yeah, well, I'm, a rules, really, uh, I'm really, a rules geek. I'm the one who writes yeah. these rules. We're, we're used to Kevin explaining things. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go, let's go with the guy who actually won uh, Seattle for 2012. How did you win the bid for Western Con Seattle 2012? So you got it's, it. Congratulations. How did that go about? It's hard to answer that question definitively. Uh, my opinion is that the way to get votes is just to get your face in front of people and get people to know you and trust you. And that's what we did. And then we've traveled all over. Um, uh, we've been to Los Angeles and Portland and San Francisco. And, and uh, I was in Spokane a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we, uh, we had a little convention in Vancouver last year and we just there's, we have a committee and, and we just span out and go to different places um, you have to have what a presence which means you show up at sit in tables you throw parties you have a website and basically you communicate to people that a you can do stuff b that you're committed to doing it and see that you know you're the right people and that you will run a convention that people want to come to and I understand people have to pay to vote uh, is that true? Yes, there's a voting fee, which becomes a supporting membership, which, which helps to finance the convention. Um, some of us, you know, think that's a good idea, and some of us don't. I'd rather have, you know, a free ballot, but that's another question. Yeah, the, both WesterCon and WorldCon are set up that you're, you're needing, you're required to purchase a membership in the convention you're voting on. You're not, regardless of where it is, you're buying a minimum membership in that convention right. showing that you have a stake in it. Okay. Otherwise, there's a pretty good chance that most conventions would end up going, well, we'll just vote to whatever's closest. Got it. I think there's a lot of different variables that different voters consider. Um, the committee, the facility, yeah. uh, the city you're traveling to, how expensive it is to get there, so uh, you've things like that. We have, we're wrapping this up at the second, but, uh, your, your job, besides being nice and giving them food, is to convince them um, that this is going to, where the best city is going to be affordable and we're going to make it easy for you. And, and, we're, and so you've got a, a cheat sheet, so to speak. Of the best combination of variables. The best I'm, combination of yeah. variables. I'm on, the, I'm on the Chicago bid. Com 15 seconds left. So well, for Texas, we looked at several cities within Texas and we picked San Antonio because a lot of folks like to go to San Antonio. There's a lot to do there. Yes. In addition got to it. the convention, got we're it. downtown right on the Riverwalk. Got it. Well, I would like to thank you guys all for being here on our special episode of NeverEndingPanel.com, and uh, that about wraps it up. Any time to do your little table thing. If there are any questions that you might possibly be answered, anything you want to go into, please comment below and let us know.